Please welcome to the stage Berta Gonzalvo. Round warm of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction and the invitation to stay here today, taking the opportunity to talk more about uh, our running uh, projects, our running solutions for the industry for the near future. And uh, as uh, we commented, we are going to be in uh, two projects, Kraken and later uh, Barbara. But let me to have the time to talk uh, more our and about our entity. Our entity is uh, a technological center called ITIP. We are in Zaragoza in Spain, but uh, working in all the world, trying to be a connection between the science and the needs of the industry in the short, medium, and the long term. We basically are working in three pillars, novel materials, efficient production, and innovative solution. We, uh, our center started to be running uh, more than 25 years ago as an spin-off of the University of the Zaragoza mechanical department, working only in thermoplastics and totally connected with the injection molding. 100% working in automotive in the past, and now we are proud to say that uh, we are working in all sectors that plastics are around, okay? Plastics are around of us, of course, in some metals as well, and trying to cover all the value chain of the product development, from the design, the conceptualization, to the manufacturing processes, and going with the companies to the market. We are not working only in injection, as you can suppose, because we are here because we are involved in additive manufacturing. We are working in additive manufacturing for the last 17 years, being one of the pioneers in Spain, of course in Europe as well, and trying to encourage the industry, not only the large companies, as well as the small and medium enterprises, trying to be, uh, trying to alive in a better world and have uh, solutions for the society in the near future. Our history in uh, Europe, working in uh, the same of R&D department, R&D, uh, activities is not too long. We start to work in the six frame program only with a participation in a task of a, a work package. In the seven frame program, we participate as coordinators in two projects, one DBO pack in nanomaterials and processes for the packaging industry, and the second, very important because it's very connected to Kraken project, okay, is Megarop. Megarop, as my colleague uh, Selko this morning the general director of uh, EFRA, the Factories of the Future Association, was our first attempt to have very, last, very large structure in this uh, project only for substructive activities to be the basis for Kraken project. Some other projects, as you can see, you are going to have their, their reference, their websites, have no sense to go into detail, but uh, I would like to emphasize that we are totally connected now with Industry 4.0 and Circular Economy. Okay, Kraken. As I said, uh, Megarob was the father of uh, Kraken, okay? Uh, Megarob is a long structure of 20 per 6 per 5 meters. It's a robot in a crane, okay? We have cranes in all industries, the manufacturing industries, Okay, the assembly industries, then how to use a crane in a factory, including a commercial robot okay, in this crane, and having the opportunity to work in all this volume, in all this uh, manufacturing area. Megarob was developed one year ago, finished this activity. Now it's in the commercialization. Okay, the, then it's open for you okay, to use it. The facilities are in Zaragoza. Okay? but we have connection with all Europe, all the world, to uh, the exploitation. Then, we have Megaro, a robot in a crane, very long structures, more than 10 meters of parts and uh, tools and molds. And our idea, our objective in this Kraken project is to use this Megaro, 
not only for substructive activities, CNC, policemen, tooling, and so on, as well as as a head for additive manufacturing. Our challenge is not only additive manufacturing of uh, metals, in this case aluminum, as well as resins. Resins with different properties depending on the product on the tool. And even to have multi-structure parts and tools. More or less, are you connected with the idea? Anyway, we are going to go into detail, okay? But the idea is to have safes, okay? of different materials, aluminum and resins, and having the opportunity to add this material and to remove it, okay? To have additive and subtractive activities. How to connect with the needs and the solutions to the industry, going together with the standardization. I'm particularly on board of the technical committee of the standardization in Europe, the ISO, and we are working together with the um, ISTM. Okay, then this is the consortium, six large companies, five SMEs, three research organizations, of course, us, okay, IT entity, and one industry association, CECIMO. All together, try to go all in the same way to find the solution to this issue. Okay, this is uh, the mega uh, basis, okay? This robot, okay, you have here the robot, it's a commercial robot, okay, this is a crane, to have the demonstrator in our facilities, we prepare a special space with a, a, as a pilot line, okay, and our idea, as I said, is have multi-material 3D printing, resins and aluminum in one structure, subtractive manufacturing, working in the same line like uh, a CNC machine, okay, with CM um, um, uh, softwares. Robotics, okay, we are going to use, as I said, a commercial robot, but we are developing the software and the hardware to be connected, okay, and to have the precision and the accuracy needed in all this volume. CAM systems, as I said, and real-time control. We are using a laser tracker coming from uh, our colleagues, uh, Leica, it's a partner in the, in the consortium, Hexagon, to have accuracy, okay, very, very uh, thin accuracy in all the volume. We are sending 1,000 signals per second, okay, to be sure in all time in the X, Y, Z in all the volume, 20 per six per five meters. Of course, it's possible to manufacture very small products, small tools, but it's possible to use all volume for a very large products as well, and even to have different products, different tools in all the manufacturing uh, area. It's possible to transfer this solution to each company, each uh, entity that, that I have a crane. Yes, the idea, this is only a pilot, okay, a demonstration area, but in all companies, in all industries, we have cranes to move something, then we can use this uh, element of movement not only for this activity, as well as for manufacturing activity, as I said. Okay, some uh, first samples about the developments that uh, we have just uh, uh, reached, okay? We develop a new 3D printing system for this thermoset resin polyurethane, and we are uh, formulating different grades depending on the application. We can see here the first extrusion of this uh, uh, thermoset resin. The examples here, you can see as well these samples in our both, okay, just in the, this corner, okay. And uh, some examples about the upscaling solution, how depositate these resins in the uh, perfect uh, strategy to save time, save material, to get, to get the final uh, solution. For instance, one of the companies involved, uh, Fiat, and Pininfar Fiat and Pininfarina, are very keen on this solution, to prepare concept cars okay, in one uh, in, in, in a, in a non-scale 
a volume directly in one by one, okay? Okay, the same, but of course with other solution, other approaches with metals, okay? We are using arc wire, filament of aluminum, okay? That is depositing uh, depending of, on the strategies that we are sending through the uh, software. And uh, our objective is try to reach very high deposition rates because with the thermosets we are around 180 kilograms per hour. However, with uh, aluminum, the deposition, deposition rate is lower. Then we need to combine both uh, solutions and then we go directly to the samples. For instance, these samples you can see as well there, okay, physically, if you want. To prepare hybrid structures, hybrid structures, we need to be sure that both materials are completely uh, joined, okay? Then we are developing a, a solution to prepare this interface between polymer and metal to have a perfect union between both materials. Then, as well, we would like uh, to work, as I, as I said, in substructive activities, not only additive, we would like to use uh, the head of the robot as well as for substructive activi acti activities, and then we need to combine cutting forces with flexibility of the system for both materials, resins and metals. Some examples of these uh, substructive activities, for instance, for finishing, uh, we reduce, okay, the the surface okay, of these uh, samples, and even we can uh, pulse that uh, surface and prepare for different applications. Because we are not only thinking as a part, okay, we are thinking as well for tools and mules. Okay, some examples about this hybridation between resins and metals, and as well as for the uh, cutting or the uh, milling activities to finish the, the final uh, product. Always thinking that uh, this is 3D, okay? We have free form, free geometries to combine both materials and the substructive activities. The unhybrid solution between resin, okay? It's the light color, okay? The black or the uh, yellow color. The blue one is a resin that has been deposited with these systems because this first resin is a plate, a commercial plate, okay, of resin. Depositation in free form and depositation of the aluminum with the other system to have hybrid solution. And at the end, a, a milling a process to get the final shape. At the end, one solution, this is the prototype a demonstrator, but open to offer you services and to develop new solutions for each specific uh, needs of the companies. It's true, not all companies need Megarob as is. We need to adapt, okay? Then we have a team working in the specifications in uh, detail uh, projects for its uh, uh, needs and solution. Then we have a tool store, like a CNC machine, tool changer, okay? Because we are working with polymers, same, working with metals, same, we need to pull this man, okay? Then we need to change, uh, or even, if possible, to use different robots, okay, in, in the crane to these uh, activities. We have a welding machine for the uh, aluminum filaments, a structure machine for the uh, polymers, metallization machine, laser tracker, that is now, it's not in the picture, but it's here, okay, controlling all the points in the area, manufacturing area, a robot, okay, and different uh, spindles, okay, to develop the different activities. And of course, a crane as the basis of the system. Then you have a YouTube uh, videos, okay, to, to see it. It's open to you to, to visit the, the, the facilities as well, in case of needed. And uh, we are going to demonstrate under the same of the project, two solutions uh, mainly. One 
is a waterproof uh, covering models for tunnels coming, coming from Axiona Infrastructures uh, Company for uh, civil applications. Aluminium metallic bag um, front uh, frames for automotive, as well as uh, a pinning farina mock-up car, as I said previously. Our web page with all this information we have in the media as well, Twitter, Facebook, all the media, and uh, open to your questions, commentaries, and so on. Only two short videos to see the process for metals and for resins to end the presentation. Okay. As you can see here, is the process of uh, depositation of the uh, aluminum wire, okay, to prepare the structure. As you can see, the final geometry is not perfect. Then we need to, okay, to cut, to mill the surface. Okay, it's not only for 90 degrees, okay, it's possible to prepare three forms, okay. This is the video of the one the first approach. And this is the, uh, okay, the appearance of the final product before the uh, subtractive activities. Okay, and now the second video is uh, with the polymer. And it's the, the position of the polymer, the special formula that we are preparing to have very high uh, deposition rates, okay? 180 kilograms uh, per hour. It's too fast, okay? It's possible to prepare uh, tools, mules in a very short term. Okay, and that's all. Uh, my email, my contact details, and of course, all the uh, IT team to uh, offer you these solutions. And if it's okay, I would like to okay, have your questions and uh, try to be open to, to answer your, uh, your questions. Thank you. Um, in ad additive manufacturing, that's very good. Ah, caught me, you caught me talking with our next speaker. I'm so sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, Berta, I think you're gonna continue moving on, but before we do, do we have any questions from Berta? I have a microphone here, I'll come down to you. It's if totally you clear. Oh, totally. For me, it's not totally clear. Eh? <laughs> we have a lot of, uh, After 17 years, <laughs> it's not a, totally clear. No. <laughs> I think the problem is the technology is moving along so quickly. Unless you're at an event like this every day, you're behind. Because things are changing, and by this time next year, and I think I'm going to take advantage of this one more time, between the 16th and 18th of October, add it to your agenda, in 3 industry will be back. And I think we're all very excited to see the advances that are going to be made between now and 12 months from now. I'm very interested to hear what's going on in Ferragosa. Yeah. I'm also very interested to how active manufacturing is going to be going on in Mars by then. You think I'm kidding? The European Space Agency right. was here, and they're very <laughs> interested in this. OK, thank you. That's all. Thank you very much. Of course, uh, we're that. going to be in different, uh, as you, yes, as you uh, said, the events. First, last, uh, last week in one fair in Hanover. In uh, two weeks, uh, we're going to be in Brussels. Our idea is not only, of course, develop the technology that is okay, crucial for the business activities, but uh, of course, is trying to transfer this uh, technology to different industries, okay? And trying to particularize uh, the technology for the uh, final needs, the final solution for its uh, industry. We talk in the uh, Kraken uh, with two demonstrators, uh, one for a building, for a civil uh, construction, and uh, the other one for automotive, but of course are not a unique, okay? Are two representative industries with very large products uh, with needs uh, to, to avoid uh, extra material to avoid extra costs to be uh, lead in the time to market, but of course it's possible to transfer to aeronautics. We are working on that as well, and uh, renewable energies. All these very long products that are running 
around us. Okay, finishing with Kraken, that is totally connected with our uh, line of uh, efficient production and uh, automated processes. And now we go with Barbara. Barbara uh, is uh, our first project coordinating in the, connected with the bio-based bio industries. We are working mainly in two uh, big areas in Europe. One is factories of the future, and the other is materials, advanced materials. And in one of these lines, in materials, we are working not only in thermoplastics, thermosets coming from okay, conventional sources, we are working as well in biotechnology, uh, in bioeconomy, very hard. In this project, the challenge is to develop new uh, biopolymers and bioadditives to be totally functional for uh, very uh, extremely uh, properties, uh, very advanced properties, mainly uh, for uh, 3D printing. Of course, we're in industry, why not 3D printing? But the main objective is to develop the material, okay? Uh, our role in the project, as I tip, is going to develop um, a solution, a new uh, head, a new uh, technology of 3D printing for use, uh, for using these uh, new materials that we are going to uh, develop. This slide is, is the same that we saw in uh, Kraken. Um, I think all of you uh, are in the previous session of Kraken project. Anyway, as I, uh, as I said, to sum up, novel materials, okay? Then this activity, Barbara, is totally connected with biopolymers and their uh, additives, efficient production, 3D printing for us is there, okay? It's in efficient production, additive and destructive, as I said, and innovative solutions to the industry. And this project is uh, for this axis of our activity, the uh, BBI uh, activity. Okay, the problem to solve, okay, is uh, to have very advanced materials, easy to use, ready to be transformed in 3D printers, okay? And to solve the technical barrier of uh, half engineering materials. Okay, not only for uh, domestic uses, okay, that of course are very welcome for the society, this PLA that we have for okay, domestic uh, uh, 3D printers and even for industrial uh, 3D printers. But our aim in this project is to solve the barrier or be performance around 150 degrees, okay? With biodegradable materials and bio-based as well both, okay? I suppose you know the difference between bio-based and biodegradable materials, but uh, it's uh, totally connected to the uh, source, okay? To the uh, source to develop these materials. Anyway, we are going to go in deep later. Uh, okay, the 3D printers, the additive manufacturing processes is not totally functional for these uh, materials as well, and we uh, have the challenge to develop a new solution, new 3D printer, totally dedicated for these biomaterials, okay? Okay, uh, lack of quality that uh, now we have with these bio solutions, that then we have a poor perception of the biodegradable uh, and bio-based uh, um, bio materials for 3D printing. We need to solve with this project and really it's not a, a value chain around. And in this project, we would like to have a totally value chain connected. The chemical uh, companies, the chemical companies working in the extraction of the uh, molecules to prepare these biopolymers, these bioadditives, to be in connection with the industries that are going to use, finally, to develop this, uh, their projects. Then, general objectives for new materials, in general, functionalized materials with bioadditives, because now we have bio, bio materials, but uh, with uh, scientific, uh, synthetic uh, additives, or vice versa, okay? But we need to have one uh, solution for new materials with bioadditives and biopolymers. 
we need to validate in Barbara uh, project uh, through uh, FFF, okay, the FVM uh, technology, fuse uh, deposition modeling, okay, for two key uh, industries, again, automotive and building. Not, uh, it's not mandatory to go to very large structures, it's possible to uh, small solutions as we are going to see. And we are going to establish two new value chains, okay? New advances to allow a direct application to a final uh, product, okay? And we are going to use this technology for tools and tools, not, not only for final products. It's the second value chain. Very good uh, consortium coordinated by uh, our IT activity with, by, in IT. And uh, as you can see, different roles. Industry, very large companies, a small and medium enterprises. Don't forget that Europe is, okay, majority SMEs, then must be in connection with the large industries and RTV performers, uh, research centers like us with uh, excellence in science. Okay, this program is not only science, okay? We are, of course, in science, okay? In research, basic research, but connected to the industrial needs, okay? That's the point of uh, this uh, solution. Lot of words, okay? Lot of words to understand the final aim of Barbara, but as I said, we are, we are developing a cascade approach, okay? A cascade extraction of uh, different molecules to prepare from agro-waste mainly. This agro-waste, for instance, coming from almonds, carrots, all the agro sectors around us in Europe, okay? And uh, we are going to uh, prepare functional uh, biomolecules, like essential oils or antimicrobial molecules to even to have reinforcement agents, okay? But uh, bio uh, agents. The main molecules are detailed there. I am just a lead engineer, okay? <laughs> not, not chemical. It's, it's a joke, but uh, of course, you have all the uh, molecules that we detect, of course, in the proof of concept previously to the uh, development of the project, okay? To have the, to be sure that we are going to reach our objective. And we have, for instance, polyphenols, uh, tannins, beta carotens, and uh, polysaccharides to uh, have these four biopolymers and the additives. And we're go going to implement two uh, uh, pilot lines, okay? Uh, uh, the idea is to prepare around, in the first approach, three, five kilograms per day, depending on the uh, final solution. But it's clear that this is fir the first stage to go to the industrialization of the solution at the end of the project. The idea is not only to have this uh, chemical uh, part, uh, uh, of course, solved, we need to go directly to the validation in different applications, as I said, uh, in two industries. And we are going to develop a new machine, a new 3D printer, to uh, be ready to process this kind of materials. Totally connected to sustainability. We need to be sure that uh, uh, we are going to minimize the use of non-renewable products and uh, be in connections with the uh, standardization that are running okay, are around this kind of uh, products as well. Okay, to sum up the project in one slide, we have here all the ingredients of this salad, okay, to have the solution of this uh, new five, sorry, four uh, biopolymers and additives uh, to the industry, coming from the agricultural biomass, bio four new grades, new biopolymers. We are going to prepare master batches, materials to be processes in the uh, 3D printers and validation in industry parts. We are going to develop a door handle, okay, coming from Fiat, and uh, a, dasia, uh, a dashboard fascia, okay? Both solutions for automotive. And one tool, one mool, to develop joints for this kind of uh, structures. This is the 
a, okay, a, a view of this kind of mules to process composites. The challenge is to solve these three uh, axes, mechanical properties, thermal behavior, and aesthetical and well-being uh, solution. Talking about more about the consortium, we have on board a, a raw material manufacturer, like a, a group uh, Samka, Nurel, that are working in biopolymers. And CIA is a commercial brand, and they are on board of this, uh, in this uh, project in order to develop these new uh, biosolutions for this sector. Okay? And we have here the detail of which molecules, which uh, chains are going to be tested and extracted in order to have these final materials. Okay, about the technology, we are going to develop this head, okay, this new head, to combine the, um, the material uh, with the final solution, introducing a plasma technology to prepare each filament to be joined perfectly each other in the final uh, product. It's one of the problems that, that we saw with uh, biopolymers. Uh, then uh, we are going to uh, solve it, including this uh, thermal control, pressure control, and uh, plasma uh, technology. These are the two prototypes. First, uh, as I said, this uh, 3D printing mool for this kind of joints, okay? It's in an industrial need, okay? It's real. Company offer us the possibility to go ahead with this uh, solution. And in the automotive industry, with this uh, FIA group and Pininfarina, trying to have antimicrobial solution colors. As you know, we, the, the consumers, the society, would like to have more colors, particularly size, uh, to customize to each uh, uh, person. Then uh, we need to offer uh, functional additives, bio additives, to reach each color, okay, depending on the uh, consumer. And as well, fragrance release. That is a new trend in automotive as well. Then, the same value chain that we saw in the previous slides, okay, coming from the chemical point of view, okay, from the agro uh, food and, and waste to the final product uh, to create these two uh, new value chains. We, uh, I think, as, uh, as I said, uh, are totally involved with uh, 3D printing since uh, 17 years ago. And we are members of uh, the additive manufacturing platform in Europe, and members of the technical committee of ISO. And of course, we are going to exchange our solution, our uh, developments in this project to this group as well, trying to solve okay, procedures and standards to use these materials in the near future. Okay, and that's all. You have uh, the web page, of course, my uh, contact details for further information. And thank you for, okay, to, to, to be patient uh, with me to, to listen to this uh, presentation and open to your questions. Thank you. We are very, very patient with you. <laughs> thank you. So much information as a layman in this topic, but I'm learning too. Once again, I would like to give anybody the opportunity to ask any questions that you would like to ask Berta before she steps down? If you have any, Bernie, I'll bring the microphone to you. Does anybody have a question they'd like to ask? If not, then I would simply like to give you, Berta, a little gift from Mikel, Tony, and in 3D Street. A nice little wow. 3D design. It's very pretty, very pretty inside. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And thank you very much for your expertise My of being here. <laughs> OK, thank you. Okay. Round of applause, please. Thank you very much. We're down to our final speaker, ladies and gentlemen. And let me get my card just to make sure I have. <laughs>